When Mike Pence made that decision to certify that election, that's why Mike Pence isn't on this stage. The debate between Walls and Vance highlighted Vance's slick ability to lie. Proof that while artificial sweeteners may taste sweet at first, once inside you, it's no good at all. Uh, last night, Senator Vance refused to answer whether Trump lost the 2020 election. Let's listen to that. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to... that is a damning non-answer. Yeah, Corey, why is this so difficult for the Trump campaign to answer? I mean, it's 2024. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Can you answer that? Jim, I think it's very simple. The American people have passed the 2020 election. They're focused on an election which is just under five weeks away. Okay, everyone in Trump world is back on that there was fraud bull****. But do I have to do this? 60 court cases with over 25 Trump appointed judges and dozens of Republicans from Mitch McConnell to Kevin McCarthy said Biden won. All said there was no widespread fraud. Because the only way we're gonna lose this election is if the election is rigged. Widespread being the key word. Yeah, there was a guy in Arkansas who voted for Trump twice and a woman in Kentucky who voted for her mother when she was sick. That did not affect the votes of 150 million people. And what we have, we have an opportunity to do now is to talk about two different visions for America. And what J.D. Vance laid out last night is a very different vision than what Tim Walls and Kamala Harris want to say. So, look, we can go back and relitigate the 2020 election, or we can look at what we can do to make America better for the everyday Americans who are struggling under Bidenomics. Yeah, They're struggling Corey, under... It's not, yeah, <clears throat> it's not relitigating. It's just, it's just a simple question. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? I mean, that's... A, that's yeah, but Jim, easy... Jim, why are we talking about 2020 anymore? Does the American people care about the 2020 election anymore? Or do they care about being able to put food on their table, gas well, in their car, home, I think one reason why their... it's coming up, Corey, is because uh, the former president has said on the campaign trail repeatedly uh, that there was all this widespread fraud in 2020. That was not the case. And he's also uh, teeing up the same kinds of challenges after this election. It hasn't even happened yet. So it, it is a very well, Jim, Jim we know there was fraud. There's no question there was some fraud that took place in the 2020 election. There's no, no question about that. No widespread fraud. No well, widespread fraud. What does fraud. widespread mean, Jim? Is, is, yeah. is one vote that's illegal yeah. enough? Or is how many do you determine is widespread? What is that number? There were instances of voter fraud from Trump supporters. I mean, you know that from the 2020 campaign. But And, and I, you're saying there was I, none I on the, the other side, Jim? Is, I mean, I'm sure there was, but Corey, I mean, every, every expert, people from inside the Trump administration who have come out since then have said, no, no widespread voter fraud. And but I guess what the does question widespread is, mean, Jim? Why Corey, are we focusing on 2024 is my question. Okay, so Corey, I guess, Corey, so I guess what you're saying is, is that Donald Trump did not lose the 2020 election. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is Joe Biden is the president of the United States. You recognize that and I recognize that. But let's talk about yeah. the 2024 election, which is less than five weeks away. And let's look at the two visions for America. Will Donald, Trump, two candidates will Donald Trump honor the results of the 2024 election? Will he do that? Jim, did, 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 did Hillary Clinton honor the results? No. Did Democrats yes, honor the results? Yes, she did. She called she and did conceded not. the she election. Was, Corey, Jim, I was with true. you guys on, on election night in, in Manhattan She said the in election was stolen. She said there was Russian interference. She, she called, Members of this she network called said the that the Steele dossier she was true. Called the, she called the then president-elect and conceded the election. Jim, that why is are we talking did. hypotheticals? Why are you we talking that. about the policy matters that matter to the American people? The I know, but Corey, the, it's a simple question. Across this country. Will the former Jim, why president... are we talking about the 13,000 murderers who've been led in into this country under the Biden-Harris yeah. Walls administration? Let's talk about things that people care about. Let's talk about yeah. the crippling economy. You, well, know, let's you talk... want to talk about a hypothetical in five weeks let's from now. Talk... I'm talking about every single day right now. Let's... That's Corey Lewandowski, who, when it comes to sleaze, he gives Fat Donnie a run for his money. The the best is yet to come. Lewandowski was Trump's right-hand reach-around until he was fired by Trump World back in 2016 and then rehired later, but then had to cut a deal with Las Vegas prosecutors after he was charged with misdemeanor battery after unwanted sexual advances toward a woman during a charity dinner back in 2021. A woman accused him of repeatedly touching her, including her legs and her ass, and spoke to her in sexually graphic terms. And no, she wasn't some libtard. She was a wife of a major GOP donor who also alleged Lewandowski stalked her throughout the hotel and told her she had a nice after throwing a drink at her. Then Trump rehired him. So consider that again as he defends Trump. But first, a couple more things. Wait, the number one issue we continue to see is the economy. And it's always the case. And the question you have to ask yourself, are you better off today than you were four years ago? And it relates to the issue of pro-life. Donald Trump appointed three pro-life judges that are sitting on the Supreme Court that overturned Roe v. Wade so it goes back to the states. And so these states now decide through the elections what those laws are going to look like. And what happens in Kansas 
in Ohio may be very different than what happens in a state like New York or Arizona. Sure. So look, the states are the laboratories of democracy. States are the laboratory of democracy? Uh, no, that would be the Constitution. States like Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Louisiana, they denied black and white people the right to marry until 1999. Denied gay people not only the right to marry, but arrested them in the 90s for sodomy. They routinely harassed black voters, and states like Arizona passed a law that allowed them to stop Hispanic people at random and demand and proof of citizenship. Ohio wants to force 10-year-old rape victims who get pregnant to carry the child to term, and Missouri would allow the rapist visitation rights. That's some laboratory you got there. I'm 12 years old. I attend Buffalo Middle School. I play for varsity volleyball, and I run track. My education is very important to me, and I plan on doing great things in life. If a man decides that I'm an object, it is unspeakable and tragic things to me? Am I a child supposed to carry and birth another child? Am I to put my body through the physical trauma of pregnancy? Am I to suffer the mental implications? A child who had no say in what was being done with my body. Some here say they are pro-life. What about my life? And does my, not, does my life not matter to you? But that's what's wrong with saying states can handle this better than the federal government. Look at Florida and Texas, two huge states with zero state taxes. So each year when they're battered by hurricanes or ice storms, they have to come begging to the feds to bail them out. Look, here are the Trump lies. The election wasn't stolen. But this election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. Trump's economy wasn't as strong as Biden's. Every metric from GDP to unemployment favored Biden dramatically. I will say I was surprised. I spoke to a number of CEOs who I would say walked into the meeting being Trump supporter-ish or thinking that they might be leaning that direction, who said that he was remarkably meandering uh, could not keep a straight thought. And inflation? It started with a trillion plus we threw into the economy during the pandemic. The economy that stopped during COVID, but people continued to spend money and supply dried up. That's the classic definition of inflation. High demand, low supply. And it was all over the world. Through the Fed and aggressive policies, Biden slowed inflation dramatically. But big business, they're still gouging Americans. Yeah, it does. By the way, what happens when you, what sword. does happen when you put tariffs on uh, on goods and you and you well, we stop immigration and force migrants to leave well, in I mean, terms like, of wages. Unless you're Hamill and I'm kind of against it. Isn't dude. that going to be inflationary? Of course. The biggest and most insulting lie, however, is this. Abortion in the ninth month is absolutely fine. He also says execution after birth. It's execution, no longer abortion, because the baby is born is OK. That doesn't happen. It's never happened. And it's dangerous for healthcare workers at Planned Parenthood and women's clinics across America. Why? Because MAGA is a collection of uneducated idiots with AR-15s. Or, Donnie, are they MK-47s? MK-47s? I know that gun very well. I got to know it very well. I've become an expert on guns. The world, according to Trump, is a colossal lie. And the fact that the guy running his campaign is a sexual predator should surprise no one. They wanted to destroy my, my reputation. Look, the truth is hard. Explaining macroeconomics to grad students is difficult, much less the hostess at an Arkansas Denny's. They need to trust people to make decisions for them. But instead, they're trusting the guy who lowered corporate taxes to the tune of trillions while doing nothing for them. In fact, here's how Trump deals with natural disasters. There's an old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Unless, of course, these are the words. Walk down to the Capitol. Do you want to stop this from happening again? Goddamn right. I don't want to talk about this stuff. It's not fair. I'm ready. Let's go. This isn't their Republican Party anymore. Who's with me? Am I wrong? Yes. Tick tock. You're in a lot of trouble, Donnie. <laughs> I think he's crazy. I'm Chip Franklin.